What's up everybody? Let's take a look at this simple harmonic problem that we have here. So we have a mass um, attached to a spring. It is horizontal and the other ends attached to a wall. We're going to pull it back a certain distance and let it go essentially. And this is going to be a graph here of the potential energy, spring potential energy. So visually again here's our little spring, here's our mass, we're going to pull it back a certain distance, 0.25, and let it go, right? And it's just going to kind of go back and forth in simple harmonic motion. And remember, the amplitude here would be 0.25. So the first question is essentially asking to create a force versus position graph. So remember, our force here would be F equals negative KX. So we want to create that graph. Um, Remember when we're pushed in right here, we're going to have a positive force this way. When we are um, uh, extended here, we're going to have a negative force going back this way. That's where that negative comes from here. So um, yeah, they are just asking for a sketch. So we don't really need to put numbers here. I do want to calculate that just so you can see how to do it. So remember, um, our spring potential us equals one half kx squared and we can simply find any point on this graph to go ahead and figure out our spring constant so for example if we look just here at the peak that's going to be 10 joules so 10 joules equals one half times k and then that distance here as we know is 0.25 that's at maximum you could actually take any two points on this to figure this out um, but I'm going to use the extremes just because it's it's nice and easy so anyways go ahead and do a little bit of algebra go ahead and solve for k and you should get a k of 320 okay remember that's newtons per meter so knowing that that that's 320 we can now go ahead and figure out what's our maximum force going to be. So our maximum force then, we could say force equals negative 320, and then the maximum K again was 0.25, and for that then we're going to get, what's that, 80? So anyways, the reason I'm doing this is we're going to go ahead and um, graph this, and so for point, oops, that's zero, zero, zero. So point two five would be right here. That's going to go up to eighty. So I'm just going to go ahead and set this to eighty, and then we'll go ahead and plot that point right there, ish. Okay. And the reason it's positive again, when it's a negative k, we're going to end up with a positive force, and we get the same thing down here. So if this is negative eighty on this side negative 80 we should end up with 0.25 right here and then we're just going to go ahead and connect these this is a line so uh, you should use a ruler I just freehanded that but you should go ahead and use a ruler it is a line because we'll look at our equation it's a linear type equation alright the next part is gonna say let's figure out the period of oscillation so remember t equals 2 pi square root of m over k so yeah we know the mass the mass was given to us and we just found k so even though they didn't necessarily want you to find k for this graph you are going to eventually have to in this part of the problem so what was our mass here our mass was 0.4 and then we'll use our 320 here do some math, you solve this, you should get a T of, I think it's like 22.22.222 seconds. So the second part of the question, um, this time we're going to take a new block, a larger block, and we're going to essentially do the exact same thing, we're just using it with a larger block. So the first one was um, 0.25, the second one is 1. Actually, I think the first one was 0.4. Either way, it doesn't matter. The point is it, is that it's a bigger mass. Um, but we are going to pull it back the same distance. We are going to do the same thing. So you do want to think about, okay, how is this bigger mass going to affect the problem? 
Remember, our spring potential equation, us equals 1 half kx squared. So notice that mass does not affect that at all. The only thing that affects it is what the spring is, which we have not changed, and how far we pull it back, which we have not changed. So the spring potential energy formula is going to look exactly the same. Um, well, remember, the us, as this uh, as this block is going back and forth, essentially what you're doing is you're changing us to ke and vice versa. Actually it starts with us max, right? And then it's going to turn into both as you're moving and then it's going to turn into ke max, etc, etc. So I guess the point is, is if we start with 10 joules of us, we should end up with 10 joules of Ke when we're at that maximum point. Well, where does that maximum point occur? That occurs right in the middle. So right here is where we're going to have our maximum Ke. So we can just say, well, there's going to be 10 joules there at that maximum, at that zero point. And then hopefully it's obvious to you is when you reach the extremes, you're not moving anymore. So if you're not moving anymore, that means the kinetic energy is also going to be zero. So at the two extremes, 0.25, we should have a zero. 0.25, we should have a zero as well. Okay, and then since this is a little parabola here, you should have the same kind of parabola. It's just going to be inverted. So just go ahead and just draw this in. Now you could find points along the way. So for example, at, um, you know, wherever, let's look at 0.2. 0.2, it's at 7, so at negative 0.2, this should be at 3. So if I wanted to, I could plot a bunch of points here. They're just asking for a sketch, so I think what I just did is sufficient. But, um, you know, you could just look at some of the points at negative 2. Since this is 7, they should add up to 10. That means that should be 0.3 for kinetic. If we look at 0.1, 0.1 looks like it's about a little bit less than 2. So that means this should be a little bit more than 8. Hey, it looks like that one's drawn in pretty well. Okay, notice that the mass does not affect the kinetic energy at all. Here's a question, what would mass affect? Think about that. The mass would affect the velocity. So even though the kinetic energy is the same, you have Ke equals 1 half mv squared, the kinetic energy is the same, but the mass is bigger. Therefore, it would move slower. And that should make sense. If it's a bigger mass, it's harder to move it, more inertia. If there's more inertia, it's going to be have a smaller acceleration. Smaller acceleration means smaller velocity. And consequently, it would have a time would go up, right? It would take longer for it to go from one end to the other end because again the mass is bigger, acceleration is smaller, velocity is smaller, so the time should increase, the period should increase. And you would see that in the equation as well, right? We had t equals 2 pi square root of m over k, and if m goes up you can clearly see t would go up as well. Alright, so go ahead and score yourself and let me know if you have any questions.